Have you ever melted a hole in your model rocket's parachute and you want to prevent it from happening again in the future? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Parachutes are very delicate. In model rocketry, we either use a plastic parachute like you find in a small rocket, or in big rockets, we use a cloth parachute like this nylon parachute. Either way, they're pretty fragile because they are very thin. So you want to protect them because you want to reuse that parachute over and over again. And you don't want the damage to occur during the flight where it collapses the parachute and then the rocket comes down hard because that's a safety concern. And we also want to get our rocket back so that we can fly it again in the future. So what I want to talk about is ways that we protect our parachutes. If you've been doing rocketry for any length of time, you know about the most common way, and that's with recovery wadding. Now this is the Estes recovery wadding, and it actually is made out of toilet paper, but it's not ordinary toilet paper. It's been treated with a flame retardant chemical. So instead of burning like a regular toilet paper would, this actually smothers any flames and it just smolders and it self extinguishes. So never ever use either toilet paper or paper towels that haven't been treated. So the advantage of this is that it's fairly cheap in small rockets. It crumples really nice and to use it, you know, you're just gonna crumple it up, take your tube and you're gonna stuff it inside. And when you put it inside, you want at least like, you know, look at the diameter of your tube and you want at least one body tube diameter filled with wadding so that it acts like a little plug. And when you look down inside, make sure you can't see any light through there because otherwise that hot gas and any burning particles will come up around the wadding and could get to the parachute. So that's the Estes recovery wadding. This right here is tissue paper. This is the Quest wadding, which is a competitor to Estes. Again, it's paper. It's been treated with a flame retardant chemical and it's, it crumples nicely. It's a little stiffer and it makes a lot of noise, but it still works just the same. You're just gonna crumple it up and you're gonna put enough inside the tube to you know, make a plug that's at least like one body tube, preferably longer if you can. You know, so that's how you use it. The disadvantage of wadding is in large quantities or large diameter tubes, you're going to need a lot of it. So then it starts getting a little bit expensive. So we're looking for alternatives in that situation. And one of those alternatives is this stuff right here. This is actually, it's made out of old newspaper. So that it's newspaper that's again treated with a flame retardant chemical, and then it's shredded up and fluffed up. Now this is used in houses. So this is like blown in insulation for attics. And so you'll find it at a Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. You'll find it in big bales and it's pretty cheap in a big bell. And as you can see, it has this lovely texture and it has the affectionate name in rocketry called dog barf. So if you ever hear of anybody talking about dog barf, they're not talking about real vomit. It's this stuff right here. It's, it's, it's cellulose insulation that's been treated. And this stuff is nice because when it uh, comes out of the rocket, it just disperses. It's biodegradable, so don't worry about littering the field with this stuff because it will dissolve. As soon as the, the, the next rain hits it, you won't even notice it's that, that it's there. Our next way to protect the parachute is with a reusable wadding. So all the paper stuff, it's use it once and done. And so we've come up with another usable wadding, and this is a cloth. And again, the cloth has been treated with a flame retardant chemical. This is actually a heavy duty welding cloth. And you can see it will get sooty. It has a like a buttonhole right here where you'll thread your shock cord through it so it stays attached to the rocket. So it doesn't come down by itself. It stays attached to the rocket and it is reusable and they are washable. So when they get like too sooty, you can throw them in the washing machine and they come in different sizes. So if you have a big diameter rocket, you know, we have big diameter heat shields that are available. So either these are called heat shields, sometimes they're called Nomex protectors. If you get a special cloth that's made out of Nomex, these are cheap, they're bright colors, so it makes it easy to see your rocket as it's coming down. I like these, these are used often. They are reusable. 
and they come in different sizes. In the past, we made a Nomex protector. So this is a Nomex felt, and we actually shaped it to the diameter of the rocket. And you can see that this one's been used a lot. I mean, it gets charred and a lot of soot on it, but you would put your parachute in the other side. And what happens is then it gets kicked out of the rocket. So the nose cones up here, it gets kicked out. And again, it has a buttonhole on, on one of the pedals. I called these pedal protectors because it looked like a flower. We used to make these, uh, we may bring them back in the future. I, I really liked them because they sealed really well. You can see, you know, it covers that whole inside area really good. It's kind of like you know, it's like a piston, it has to be pushed out. And that actually gets to our next parachute protector, which is called a piston. So now this rocket right here, we have a, this one is a foam piston. And what it does is, it, again, it seals the entire cavity. And then you put it in the rocket and you, you put the shock cord through it so that it doesn't get lost. You know, and then you push it in the rocket. And then when the ejection charge goes off, it just blows it out. And it blows it out really hard and really fast. So the advantage of these is if you have a really tight area and you really got to cram your parachute in and you really want it to come out, using a piston like this is desirable because it has a lot of force and it will come out. The disadvantage is sometimes they can get stuck in the tube if they're crooked in the tube. This one right here is actually made out of foam. The problem with foam is that it can also melt they are reusable somewhat, maybe two to three flights. After that, they, they start getting pitted and melted. And so basically they get shorter and shorter. So that's one type of piston. This rocket right here from Aerotech has, a, has its own piston. So I've, I've detached the shock cord, but if you pull the shock cord out, it has its own piston in it. So again, it's a solid bulkhead that the shock cord goes through and it can push the parachute out. And so again, it's a very positive, forceful ejection of the parachute because you really have to push hard back here to get them out. Again, some of the problem is, you know, you're gonna get buildup of soot inside. And if you don't clean them off between flights, they can get harder to push in. So make sure you're cleaning them, make sure that they go in nice and easy before you use them. That is a piston launcher. Our next device used to protect the parachute is called a deployment bag. Now this again is made out of a cloth, very similar to the heat shields, but this one's actually made into a bag, which has an open end and you'll actually put the parachute on the inside. And so this one serves two purposes. One is to protect the parachute from the heat. And the other one is to make sure that the parachute deploys in an orderly manner because especially big parachutes for big high power rockets, we want them to come out and deploy correctly. Typically you'll see that the lines of the parachute stick out of the bag and then they're passed through these loops on the outside. So this end would be attached to your shock cord, but basically what happens is they're in these loops here and then when the shock cord pulls out, when it comes out of the rocket, the shock cord pulls it out. You can see that the lines are pulling out of those and it pulls it completely out of the bag. So your lines have to be fully extended first before the parachute's allowed to open. And that's the purpose of a deployment bag. You can see it's got loops on it. There's one loop on, on this side and there's actually a loop on the inside that you can attach the shock cord to so that this comes down with the rocket as well. I would highly recommend deployment bags. You know, the bigger the rocket, you know, if anything three inches and above, it's probably a good idea to start considering to use a deployment bag. They're not used very often, but they should be because they're going to save a lot of rockets from having fouled, which is tangled parachutes. Our next device is called the ejection baffle. Now these are kind of a me mechanical method of trapping the hot gases and any burning particles that come out of the rocket motor. So what we have here is a coupler and on each end is a disc. And you see that the disc has holes in it. So on this end, which it goes towards the rocket motor where the ejection charge pushes against it. It has these holes that are in the middle. And then on this side, the holes around the perimeter so that ejection charge can't go straight through. It has to kind of zigzag its way through. And what that does is it captures any burning particles 
and it also, by zigzagging, it has to change direction and that slows things down and it cools it slightly so that the ejection charge coming out on the parachute side is a lot lower. These work really good. They come in many sizes. We have them here at Apogee for our smallest uh, is the 18 millimeters in diameter, which is like three quarters of an inch in diameter, all the way up to three inch. I'm not sure if we have a four inch, but we have a three inch. You can see on one end, I've coated it with epoxy. By coating it with epoxy, it gives it extra heat resistance. Epoxy is a, what they call an ablative material. So when heat hits it, it doesn't burn, it chars. And so it chars on the surface and then that will fluff off and that protects it from the heat. Um, the Apollo missions had an ablative capsule which protected the astronauts on the inside from the heat. And so basically it was like an epoxy that gives it extra heat protection. And on this end, we have the screw eye where we're gonna attach the shock cord. And so this whole thing gets glued inside the tube. Your shock cord gets attached here, your parachute is here, and the nose cone is there. So the baffles, as I said, come in all different sizes. We include them in a lot of our kits. The disadvantage is that they take up room inside the rocket. So if you have a short rocket, you might not have enough room for a baffle. But if it's a long rocket, I'd say go for it. Our next system is called a cold gas ejection system. The, the disadvantage of a rocket motor ejection charge is it's hot. So your, your question is, well, what if we made a cold system to eject the parachute? And that's what this is. It comes in this little container and it has all these little peanuts here to hold things in. But basically they're CO2 cartridges, which are pressurized with CO2, very high pressure. And if these CO2 canisters are punctured, all that gas comes out really fast and it's cold and that can be used to push out the parachute. So all this mechanical hardware here, the sole purpose is to puncture this canister to let the gas out. So these are useful in rockets that go to extreme altitudes, anything like 50,000 feet and higher. You might wanna consider this because at that altitude, it's really hard to burn black powder which is what's in the ejection charge. Instead of using that, you would use a cold gas to push the parachute out. So these aren't used often, but some people like them. They are cold, so you're definitely not gonna burn any holes in your parachute, but it requires a lot of other hardware to make it work. So there is a little bit more of an expense, and they, they come in a kit like this, and you'll find them here at Apogee Components. And then our final way to eject the parachute is mechanical ejection systems. So basically think of this as kind of like a trap door on the side of the rocket. The side of the rocket falls off and when it does, it kicks, it pulls out the parachute. Now we don't have any kits currently that use this type of system, but you can find information on the internet, particularly YouTube, on how to make them. They are a little bit more complex and they require electronics and a servo activator to release them. I will show a couple of videos of different ones that I found here on the internet that show a me mechanical ejection system. If you wanna play with one, I'd say go for it. You know, it's, it's definitely worth trying out. Like I said, they are mechanical, they are complex. They take up a little bit more room inside your rocket and they are a little bit heavier because you have to carry a lot of extra materials and, and servos and activators, springs and rubber bands or anything else that provide the energy to, to kick off the door and to pull the parachute out. So that has been a number of ways to protect parachutes from ejection charges and so that your parachute survives so that your rocket survives. If you'd like to learn more about this, in the show notes here on YouTube, you will find a link to our website. Uh, we have a newsletter that covers these in a little bit more detail, so you can read about them. If you aren't a subscriber to our newsletter, I would say go ahead and do it. It's free and it comes out every week. So one week we give you a video, the next week we give you an actual printed newsletter that you print out on your own printer. Then you can save those and store those and it's very useful information. We're not gonna share your information. We don't spam people. We're trying to give you the information that you need to become a better modeler because that's our purpose here is we wanna see you succeed we want to see you try new and more complex things because it's exciting for you, it's exciting for us, and it helps grow the hobby. 
So that's our motivation. Go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter. Again, my name was Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. So may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.